Philippines National Hero As a Filipino, you have probably been obligated to study our national hero's life from the moment you've reached first grade till your college years, minus the part where he died by a gun parade at his back and a bullet to the head just to make sure he was dead. Whoops, spoiler alert. Jose Rizal is a hero to Filipinos, the national hero. And I'm going to tell you a textbook guideline on how human he was and how he fought for the Filipinos without actually fighting in combat. Want to learn how that happened? Let's all hop in my time machine and... Oh, uh, I don't have a time machine, but I do have a very cool transition. On June 19, 1861, the lakeshore town of Columba, Laguna, a woman was about to give birth. A certain Chudora Alonso was laboring so hard because the baby won't descend from its mother's womb. It was later found out that the baby had a very large forehead and that his mother almost died giving birth. Yup, that's our genius, alright? Chudora managed to name the baby Jose, influenced by her devotion to the Christian saint San Jose. Three days later, the boy was christened by a priest named Father Rufino Colantes. The priest noticed the baby's big head and commended it by saying he was a child destined to be great. The full name of our hero is Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Realonda. He probably got tired of saying his own name every time someone asked him, so he shortened it to Jose Rizal. His mother was his first teacher. He learned the alphabet at age 3 and could read and write at age 5. If you think that was impressive, he wrote his first poem at 8 years old. We can say that he really was a literary genius. As little Jose was growing up, his parents employed private tutors to give him lessons at home. They were Maestro Celestino and Maestro Lucas Padua. Later on, an old man named Leon Monroy and a former classmate of Jose's father became his tutor. Monroy lived in the Rizal household and taught little Jose Rizal Spanish and Latin. This didn't last long for he died five months later. After Monroy's death, Jose was sent by his parents to a private school in Binan, Laguna. There, he was taught by Maestro Justiniano. In regards to academic studies, he had beaten all the Binan boys by surpassing them in Spanish, Latin, and other subjects. Well, no surprise there. He topped his class in the next school. Ateneo de Municipal. Even with the Spaniards and Mestizo kids, this little Filipino managed to best them in academic studies. He later graduated with honors at the mere age of 16. One day, news of his mother becoming blind got to him. So, he did what all loving young Filipinos would do. He enrolled at the University of Santo Tomas in pursuit of becoming a doctor of ophthalmology. He then went to Madrid, Spain to continue his studies as a doctor and he earned his degree in medicine in 1884. He didn't stop there. He went to France to further his knowledge in ophthalmology and completed his studies in 1887. It was year 1887 when he finally wrote his masterpiece entitled Noli Mi Tangere or in English, Touch Me Not. This novel remains as one of the most studied books by high school kids in the Philippines today. Noli Mi Tangere depicts the brutality suffered by the Filipinos under the Spanish colonization era. This was Jose Rizal's version of rebellion. He pursued this rebellion against the Spaniards by joining a reform movement comprised of Filipino students in Spain called La Solidaridad. He believed that the combination of corrupt friars and bad government in the Philippines was the cause of his country's struggle. In 1891, his second novel was published and called The El Filibusterismo, or otherwise known as The Reign of Greed. This novel was considerably darker than his first novel. It profoundly impacted the Philippines' view of its national identity. It was so dark that it was banned in some parts of the country because of its brutal portrayal of the Spanish government's corruption. Jose Rizal had a number of girls linked to him. One of them was Leonor Rivera. She was always called as his one great love that never happened. They were sweethearts for 11 years. Unfortunately, Leonor's mother disapproved of their love because Rizal was a known filibustero. Rizal would send the beautiful Leonor letters when he was away. Her mother, though, kept all the letters from Leonor and brainwashed her into believing that Jose has forgotten her. 
She then sadly consented into marrying a British man and burned all of Jose's letter that she later on sewn into her wedding dress. It's all very Romeo and Juliet, right? Oh, uh, here is a good story about Rizal almost dying. To set the scene, Jose was in Madrid and he had just learned that his Leonor Rivera married a British engineer. Our Jose was heartbroken and was looking for another person to make him forget. It was then that he met a very beautiful French lady named Nellie Bustad. She was highly educated, athletic, and morally upright. But she was the fiancé of a hot-headed Antonio Luna. Jose was very vocal about his feelings towards the young Nellie. The lady reciprocated his feelings. In a party held by Filipinos, Luna became so drunk that he made inappropriate comments about Nelly. Jose, being a gentleman and also quite drunk, challenged Luna to a duel, a fight of pistols where only one would survive. Luna came to his senses and apologized to Rizal. Men can be petty when they're in love. He then went back to the Philippines in 1892 and found La Liga Filipina which is a civic movement that campaigned for social welfare through peaceful and legal means. Despite his peaceful reforms, the Spanish government still branded him as an enemy of the state. Apparently, they had not forgotten his two novels that exposed them of their corruption. So, they exiled José Rizal in Dapitan. Well, it wasn't always bad luck for our hero. In 1892, when he was detained in Dapitan, he actually won the lottery. However, he shared his lottery ticket with two other guys, which meant he only got a third of the prize. He won 6,200 pesos, which divided among the following. 2,000 pesos to his father, 200 pesos to his friend in Hong Kong, and the remaining 4,000 pesos was invested for building a school for young boys, a hospital, and a water supply system. In 1895, Rizal met and fell in love with a petite Irish girl named Josephine Bracken. She brought her father to Jose for a cataract surgery. The couple applied for a marriage license, but the church denied it and excommunicated Rizal. And the Rizal sisters didn't like her because they believed that she was a spy of the friars and considered her a threat to Jose's security. She bore a son to Jose Rizal, but the baby died after three hours. The baby was called. Francisco. In 1895, Cuba was having an epidemic called the Yellow Fever. As a medical doctor, Jose Rizal volunteered as a frontliner to serve as an army doctor. His request was granted by the Governor General. A year after, a secret society called the Katipunan emerged. Even though he was not associated with this movement, he was still arrested on his way to Cuba. He was sent back to Manila where he was tried for rebellion sedition and conspiracy and was convicted on all charges. He was guided to his cell in Fort Santiago where he spent his last 24 hours right after the conviction. At 6 a.m. of December 29, 1896, Captain Rafael Dominguez read Jose Rizal's death sentence and declared that he would be shot at 7 a.m. of the next day in Bagumbayan. At around 8 p.m. the same day, Jose ate his last supper and talked to Captain Dominguez that he had forgiven his enemies that condemned him to die. At 3 a.m. in the morning of December 30, 1896, he heard a mass and made his confession before taking the Holy Communion. He then took his final breakfast at 5.30 a.m. and even had time to write two letters, one for his family and one to his brother, Pasciano. As a farewell gift for Rizal, he was allowed to marry Josephine Bracken just two hours before his execution. Rizal was dressed in black when he was escorted to his slaughter place by a lieutenant and two Jesuit priests with more soldiers behind him. Rizal looked at the sky and mentioned how beautiful that day was. Rizal was told to stand between two lampposts in Bagumbayan, looking towards the Manila Bay. He requested the firing squad commander to shoot him facing the firing squad but was ordered to turn his back against the Filipino soldiers of the Spanish army. To make it more brutal, there was a backup of the Spanish army on standby to shoot the executioners who would not obey the order of the commander. Fuego! Shots were fired, and still, Rizal made an effort to face the firing squad, but his body full of bullets turned to the right and ended up facing the rising sun. 
Rizal's final words were, Consumatum est, which means it is finished. People held their breath as soldiers walked up to his corpse to give him the trio de gracia, a one last merciful shot in the head at close range to make sure he really was dead. So how did you find this video? Rizal really had his moments and at the age of 35, he was able to accomplish so many things in life, such as finally uniting the Philippines to rebel against the Spaniards. Please do like, comment, and subscribe.